Does the new year really help people improve themselves? What do you think? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting, good communication, child development, all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about new year. <music> In this video, we're going to be talking about renewal and what people are looking for in renewal and if the new year really helps us have renewal. And we're going to talk about teaching self-government skills and principles that you can use to help you find renewal in the new year. The end of the holiday season is marked by New Year's Day. But we all know that's not the end because actually it's the beginning and there is something significant about that. Even if someone does not like New Year resolutions, which actually do help a lot of people to improve and renew, we actually find this interesting inner sense that something has started over just because the date has changed. Suddenly it becomes 2024, 2025, 2026. Just knowing that we now have a new start to the same dates but with a new year attached makes a difference for the way that we see ourselves. We have to ask ourselves questions like, well, what did I accomplish in this last year? What do I want to accomplish in this new year? How do I look now that I'm in the new year? Better? Worse? Could I improve? How's my health? What about my relationships? Even if we really don't want to do it and we are avoiding it, there's something inside of us that just starts to do a little personal inventory when we start a new year. I know some people associate a new year and goals and resolutions, which are associated with a new year, to stress. Like, oh no, now I have to figure out more things that I'm not good at. I have to recognize all of my failures as I look over this last year. Well, that's just a mindset. For the majority of people, it's very refreshing to have a new day and a new year. Have you ever had that experience where you had a really bad day? You lost the car keys or they got locked in the car. You had a situation with one of the children. You ended up finding out that something costs more than you thought it would, whatever it is, right? And, and a neighbor gets angry at you because of your dog. All the things just pile up. And you go to bed thinking, this has to be the worst day ever. But then, in the morning, you wake up and you think, I am so grateful for a new day. Today is going to be a different day. Now, I know that's an optimistic thought, and I do have a whole video on this channel all about optimism and why optimism is so good. The video is called Increasing Optimism is a Spiritual Thing, so be sure to look for that video. It is optimistic to think that way, but it is something that most people recognize. Wow, what a gift this sun rising and this new day happens to be. Well, the same thing occurs with the new year. It doesn't matter what happened bad last year. We can now hope for something different, something better. Even if you can't quite hope for something better yet, you can hope for something different. And different has a chance of turning out better. When people recognize that that option is on the table for different and maybe even better, sometimes they just hold their heads a little higher. They do things more deliberately. They feel renewed, refreshed, washed clean. Like, it's okay, I can start over now. That mindset helps people to become better versions of themselves. It helps them decide to tackle things they didn't want to tackle before, to take on new projects and challenges with a better attitude. Because who knows, it's a new year, it could be better. To go for that job promotion, to solve that relationship problem, People do many things when they are just given a chance to wash the slate clean. The new year is a very powerful social, 
emotional, academic, and even spiritual tradition that we have in our society. Every person gets the chance to start in all the new ways. There are things in the teaching self-government parenting system that actually help a person experience this sense of renewal regularly, where you don't just have to wait for the new year. How nice would that be? We can take our goals for the new year and now really accomplish something during the rest of our year. It's so common for people to set a new year's resolution or plan a goal for themselves and within a couple of days abandon the thought and just get back into the same old thing. But what if we could keep that feeling of renewal alive? Well, we can. Years ago, when I started doing therapeutic treatment care for troubled teens, I recognized that there was a power that came in discussion. In fact, metacommunication, which is the highest level of communication, means that you talk about what you're going to talk about before you talk about it. This requires having deliberate communication before the time when you will need to follow through with whatever the plan is. In the teaching self-government parenting system, we have certain meetings that we have together. We also prepare ahead of time to use our skills and our our principles of self-government. Well, these same principles of pre-teaching and meeting and discussing together to keep ourselves pointed along the self-government track will work marvelously for our goals that we have for ourselves in the new year. In fact, if we just have a goal to be a little bit more upbeat, a little bit more optimistic, we can set those goals in a family meeting or in a couples meeting or individual mentor meetings, and then we can follow through and make little teeny goals to work toward that larger overarching goal that we have for the year. Many people don't accomplish their New Year's resolutions because even though they want to be a better version of themselves, it seems like such a big thing to actually actually make that large of a change. So in the teaching self-government parenting system, we do couples meetings. This is a journal where we record our couples meetings. This is where husband and wife get together and discuss their relationship, the relationships with the children, the things that they need to be handling with the children, and just in general, how they feel like they need to run their homes and get their needs met. Then we also have family meetings. This is the key meeting for the family. This is where everyone gathers together and discusses what's going on with the family relationships and problems that need to be solved at home. And everyone can lead the meeting and come up with solutions that help the whole family. Then we have the mentor meeting. The mentor meeting is a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, two parents, one child. It's a time where one child gets the full attention of their parents to discuss things that are important to them to set goals and make plans for their life. It helps them with their relationships as well as with their progress toward maturity. All of these meetings are great places to break down our bigger resolutions into small achievable goals. So let's say your child has a resolution to get better fit. Maybe they want to lose some weight or gain some muscle or something like that. That's a big goal and that could get overwhelming pretty soon. But you could have a mentor meeting with the child and set a goal one week for them to do 30 minutes of exercise per day. Or maybe they could start tracking some of the food that they're eating and eat less sugar. And these things can be bit by bit, one week at a time, one day at a time. It makes all the difference in being able to accomplish a goal. When you meet together as a family, you might be able to easily handle a situation like contention. Maybe siblings are fighting with each other and everyone needs to talk about skills that they may need to develop as a group. In fact, during this family meeting, you may even want to have a time where you do a family problem solving together. So this book here, The Sodas Journal, is a book where you can solve problems as a group or individually. Sodas stands for situation, options, disadvantages, advantages, solutions. This type of critical thinking exercise helps develop the prefrontal cortex and leads to better problem solving capabilities. In your meetings, you can utilize this too. 
Plus, there are other skills and principles of self-government that you may want to bring in as you are discussing with your family. There are teaching self-government skills and principles that can help you with your goal setting. So if you'll remember, there are four basic skills that we teach the children in the teaching self-government program. They are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. When a person learns those four basic skills and they use them on a regular basis, soon it becomes very natural for them to not just use those skills with other people, but to also use those skills with themselves. So a person, if they are going to follow through on their goals or resolutions so that they can have this renewal that comes with the new year, they may need to give themselves no answers about some things like sugar and chocolate. Mm, I never want to know answer about chocolate. That's like my favorite, especially the dark chocolate. But anyway, they may give themselves a no answer for that for a time and instruct themselves to eat something else. Maybe the cucumber, okay? Whatever it is, they can give themselves no answers, instructions, and when they don't do well, they can accept consequences, which is another one of those four basic skills. A self-governed person ends up essentially parenting themselves by using the four basic skills on themselves. When you are training your children to use these skills with you, you're laying a foundation for them to use them forever. When it comes to New Year, we sometimes need something to help us go the distance. We feel that renewal. We feel the date change. We have to write down new things. We're thinking, oh, it's, it's 2024. It's 2024. What do we do with this new date? Who do we want to be? But if we don't have a new thing to do to accomplish the goal, it's gonna be really hard to make a change in ourselves. A wise person once said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. Oftentimes people don't succeed on their goals and hopes to renew themselves. And it's because they don't have anything new to do. Well. And with teaching self-government, you will learn the skills and principles that you need that will help you take your goal setting and the renewal that you're hoping for to the next level. One of those things you may want to start with is calmness. I actually have a calm parenting toolkit that right now is for free on my website. The Calm Parenting Toolkit has 10 tools for calmness. This is a great starter kit for learning self-government. It is not going to teach you the whole program. It will just focus on calmness, but it will get you going on analyzing what self-government really means for you and how you can improve your communications too. Click on the link that's in the description below this video and I'll see you at that Calm Parenting Toolkit.